a very powerful message, I think, uh, for, for all of us uh, to contemplate. Uh, and it does raise this question that, that you were wrestling with in your answer before, what then is our obligation to the people of Ukraine? So um, first, this is the worst refugee crisis uh, a country has faced since the Second World War. Syria, uh, Yemen, uh, other countries uh, in the Middle East and North Africa um, have also endured horrific uh, internal civil wars and displacement, but 10% of the population of Ukraine has fled in just a few weeks. And overwhelmingly, the refugees of Ukraine are women and children. Um, first, we have a profound moral obligation um, to come to their aid and to provide uh, financial support, um, um, you know, food and um, temporary shelter and other assistance to uh, the 4.7 million Ukrainians who've already left their country um, and the 7 million or more who are already displaced within Ukraine first. Second, um, I think we have an obligation to provide every possible weapon system um, to the Ukrainian defenders. Um, the challenge there is um, how far do we go up the technology scale and what is militarily useful? Mm -hmm. We've had genuine debates about whether the MiG-29s that, or advanced uh, Soviet era jet fighters that the um, Ukrainians are asking for would actually be militarily all that useful. Mm -hmm. It is clear that advanced missile defense systems like the S-300 are in incredibly useful and advanced armor uh, and artillery, which we are now beginning to provide. Um, our NATO allies, uh, the Czechs, the Slovaks, and others uh, are beginning to provide uh, legacy Soviet systems for air defense uh, and armored vehicles. Um, but, you know, to get back to the core issue, at some point we are going to have to confront the reality that uh, Putin may be willing to escalate beyond our willing to take risks. And if we allow Ukraine to become the Syria of Eastern Europe, um, I think we will have failed, both the Ukrainian people um, and this moment in history. Um, there are complex reasons why we did not get engaged more actively and aggressively in Syria. I would have supported our doing so, but I recognize that the opposition in Syria um, was a far more complicated mix of players and partners and that the region uh, was far more divided. Um, this is a different fact pattern where uh, the Ukrainian people um, are, com are almost completely united in their opposition to Russia. Uh, the entire West is allied and organized in a way they haven't been in decades. Uh, heck, even, even the Swiss have imposed banking sanctions, and even the Swedes who sat out the Second World War um, have sent material aid. In fact, Vladimir Putin's violence and aggression, his barbarism towards the Ukrainian people, uh, may have finally expanded NATO by having Finland and Sweden seek admission. Uh, something they've considered for years but have never actually sought. So our obligation to the Ukrainian people is that their sacrifice be worth it. Um, what is happening here is being watched by other autocrats around the world, from the DPRK in Iran to obviously um, the PRC and Xi Jinping's leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. I think the future of the 21st century is going to be written in the next few weeks or months in how fiercely we are willing to defend freedom in Ukraine.